Hi everybody. Welcome back. Back in the kitchen again, as you can see. Finally got some goodies. On these valves, waiting for a diesel truck to go by, <laughs> make some noise there. On these valves, I'm going to lap them in a little bit, just to double check that these older seats are fit and clean with these new, or with the older valves, older seats, have them numbered, <laughs> as I usually do for everything, so I know where everything goes, I'm going to re-lap them. Good old Permatex, awesome stuff. Up here, little suction cup tool, stick it on there. <laughs> Sorry. You can clean this valve off a little bit more. This suction cup isn't quite sticking as good as it should. But I can definitely see what it's doing now. Yeah, it's looking good all the way around, really. Let me slide this one back out here so you guys can get a little peek. I've already worked on a couple of them. Yeah, nice good pop. I was holding my finger on the back of the guide when I slide it out. Did you hear the pop? That pop was the suction on the valve from the the valve. This the valve is good. The valve guide is nice and tight. It made a it popped when I pulled the valve out. That's good. Good stuff. Valves looking nice and clean. I think it's a space. Just not quite sticking as good as it should. And of course, now it does. <laughs> Just didn't have it quite on it. Oh, oh, yeah. Seat looks perfect. Oh, uh, yeah. Valve looks great, too. Show you guys here. Yeah. I've already worked on a couple of the seats here. Oh, let me... <laughs> I always forget. Got to turn on my TV for the light to come on. <laughs> now the light comes on. Oh, yeah, now we can see. You guys can... Oh, yeah, see the ring? The shiny ring all the way around. Can't, uh, I, I can see it from here, but you can't really see on the camera. The shiny ring goes all the way around. Oh yeah, looking great. So once again, good old, <laughs> good old Permatex valve grinding compound and the suction tool to hold on to the top of the valve. The valve grinding compound, it's not really anything that gritty. I don't put a lot on there, just a little bit just to rub things in. I've used toothpaste in the past. Toothpaste works. In a bind, if you need it, it works. It's not a problem at all. Toothpaste actually works pretty good. If you, A little bit of toothpaste, a little bit of oil to break it down, it actually works really good. Go figure. <laughs> it works in our mouth all of our lives and shines our teeth up quite nice. Even my fake ones. <laughs> I got some fake ones. It's been broken. Also, too, back here, Yep, that's the new compressor tool. Fits in here. <laughs> Goes like this. Fits in here like this. Holds the valve. Allows me to compress it. This one is just an old school. I decided let's not do anything technical on this one because I want this one to last and I just kind of want it to work for a long ass time. <laughs> and this one, I, already, I tried it already. It works really good. You just tighten it up. You hold it on there, tighten it up. It, it, uh, sometimes you just need to dial things back once again. Work it with your fingers that you've learned and taught your entire life. And I bet things will work out really good, which this one totally does. And I got a bunch of different size adapters for it up here, which fit the cups almost perfectly. It, this one holds on to it like it, <laughs> like it should. And as soon as I get all this fit together and lapped up, and fitting nicely and measured and fitting sits up there <laughs> kitchen we're gonna be good to go here 
we'll take a little trip outside and see what else is going on because it's been real good lately too. And here we go. Oh, and over here. If you guys haven't tried some Black Rifle yet, once again, highly recommend it. Drag bikes and Black Rifle, they kind of go together. Well, motorcycles and Black Rifle, <laughs> they go together quite well. Especially a good old two-stroke making a bunch of horsepower on some nitrous. Screaming down a drag strip. I miss that old bike. I really just want to build another one and drink more coffee. <laughs> Let's go out here. Out to the garage. Once again, ah, St. Louis weather. <laughs> Beautiful blue skies. Just amazing. Loving it as usual. Well, not as usual, but when we're lucky here in St. Louis, sometimes it's a bit bonkers. <laughs> Oh, yeah, look at there. Everything, all fit, <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> I'll fire this thing off here in a second for you guys. It's <laughs> it's so good now. Let me get my tripod stand moved over here. Okay, so over here. <laughs> First thing. I've tried a couple different valve setups for the, you know, for the the boost vent valve down here, you know, the, the carb boost vent. Dog blowing up out there. <laughs> the the valve that I have now, it actually seems to be working good. I ordered this one just just to see. You know, a lot of stuff you order online, you can't really tell anymore really what it is. I thought this one was made for it said quarter inch. Uh no. <laughs> I think it's actually for a fish tank. It looks like it's eighth inch. It's a beautiful little valve. Oh my goodness, it's so nice. It wasn't expensive, so I ordered it. I see why now. It's tiny. <laughs> Back on the list. But luckily this one is working great, so we're good to go there. And also, oh yeah, that's also what I've been working on out here. Got yet another parts list, yet another breakdown. Uh, throw a couple, throw a couple picks in here. Really good friend of mine. He has a '66 Chevy Impala. That really is so nice, I can't even tell you. It's a convertible drop top also. It needs some love. We Around these parts, we call it the Job Love. Mr. Job, he can build you a badass ride if you really, <laughs> if you really want to spend some time and make it right. It's getting a blueprint 3 to 3 with a power glide. All original setup, custom made a, a fan shroud for it to make everything fit because he wanted to go with a serpentine setup on the front. No air conditioning because it's got the drop tap, <laughs> cruising with top tap. And the serpentine setup he found is beautiful. I have to get a pick of that next time because I forgot to get a pick before I left today. I was actually out there today help, helping him work on it, and or help. It's all installed and done now, actually. I made the fan shroud, it's got a big aluminum radiator. Need to find some tubes, need to find every all the goodies. So we got some, I got some planning over here, getting everything worked out. But up here, this is why we blueprint engines, guys. Blueprint is not a computer. It's not a, it's not a book. A blueprint is you measuring stuff with a caliper, a not even measuring with a, an instrument. I was gonna say a micrometer, but let me show you guys here. I was kind of blown away. Everything else on this engine so far that I've test fit, rest of the gaskets are up here. Everything else seems I've test fit most of it. It all seems to fit great. But the one part we need to fit the most. This is a stock bore, as you see on here on the bottom, 736cc, if you guys can see that, 
These are stock cylinders. I wanted to go smaller to get things to rev quicker, which that's all good. This head gasket, it barely seats. And look at the big ripple in the middle where it doesn't even line up. Guys, I paid decent money for this gasket kit. The rest of it's perfect. But the one part we need the most is junk. And really, I just wanted to test fit this one just to kind of see. I planned on going with an MLS has MLS multi-layer steel, three layers of steel, which work great under boost. Most everything has them now because they work wonderful. I'm going to order one from Cometic, which I just haven't got yet because I still have to assemble the rest of the head and do all that, which is still a bunch of work. Interface, <laughs> whatever this crap is, junk. Doesn't even come close to fitting. Okay, can you believe it? So we're gonna rework that. Excuse me, all my painting here, but I'm I'm a bit I'm a bit disturbed. <laughs> Everything down here is ready to bolt on because I was ready. I just need to put things together, and I was trying to urge myself to get this cylinder head done. So. Yes, maybe it's life just teaching me patience once again. I'm learning every day. I promise. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Burning some love. Thank you. <laughs> Over here, though. Since we got to wait here, let's just, I decided, let's just finish everything here and just put the heat on it. We're just going to just make it, make it nasty. And see if it holds up. I don't know yet, but we're going to find out. <laughs> so, let's see if you guys, let's come over here today. That's my camera focusing noises. Excuse me. See if I can get her tuned in here. Oh, yeah, there we go. We're getting there. Focus. Focus. There we go. Oh, yeah. Let's see if that helps. Probably should have done it before. Sorry, guys. Okie dokie. And let me just see here. Okay. Shut that for you here. I've been through everything now. If you guys saw the little short I posted, I turned everything up yet again. It is now at 5200 on the two step. I turned the boost up because it is adjustable down here on the whiskey. Half a turn, which should be another pound of boost. It is. <laughs> two step at 5200 it now makes seven pounds of boost or it's it's over five i'm guessing because the top switch i tested the hops pressure switch that's what turns on right here this little guy when this switch turns on that turns on everything essentially that i have set up this goes the signal from here goes to a relay it turns on the fuel pump it sends a signal to the msd box and it also turns on my boost gauge when the light turns on here, that's when we know everything's on. It does it on the two-step now, which is kind of really what I've been working on the entire time. I've tested the two-step, I'm sure you guys know, about 14,000 times. And <laughs> it seemed like everything was working, but it wasn't. And the couple times that I launched it, not at the track... At the track, I made sure the button was on, pump was on. I, I made sure that I set it up that way so I can make sure. A couple times out here, it didn't turn on. And it went way lean. And bow! <laughs> the old good old snap pop. We can't do that. This engine is a bit tougher. The top end of this engine is... <clears throat> excuse me. 
really about tough as nails. It's RC Engineering, Pistons, and Top End. The head was built by RC. It's stamped on the bottom. I'll show you guys when this one comes apart. Because it's gonna. Again. <laughs> it's tough as nails. The bottom end isn't. This one is pretty much stock. Except for my build and my tune and my blueprint, which I'm double checking everything. And then my big ass ported head. The ports are huge. <laughs> Throw a tennis ball down them. So I want to test everything Soichiro did with my head design and possibly a I really want to use the hot rod F cam, but I almost want to go with a bigger lumpy cam because I know it'll work and I think the F cam is gonna stay for now. Just because I want to test it. I want to see what Soichiro really did. He was an amazing person. He did all of this. I'm just helping. <laughs> so, if you guys want to hear it, I'll light it off for you real quick. Let me crack this door shut. Let me crack that one open. We'll leave the fan off for a second. We'll just see how warm it really gets because it's going to run a little rich on the two-step because it's misfiring cylinders. And those that's what the smoke is, is the, it's the extra fuel. If I dialed the timing back a little more, it would light that on fire and bah! it throws fire out of this thing like you wouldn't believe. We're gonna try and not do that. It's not good on stuff. <laughs> when it does that, it boosts the turbo into their about 10 pounds. We're trying not to do that. <laughs> Crack this door. Okie dokie. <laughs> Here we go, guys. This thing is so nasty now, I can't even believe it. I, I didn't even really think it was going to get this nasty. I knew it was it was going to get funky. It's got some funk on it. But now the funk has a bit of nasty. Let's find out. Yeah. Fuel's on. Oh. <laughs> I was running it into the carbs there. Took a second to fill them back up. Oh, now we got plenty of pressure. Oh, idle's real low now to be nice to this transmission.
know that may seem a little bonkers. A lot of this I'm testing not super warm. I tested it right before I <laughs> came out here. It's still not even 100 degrees. The tune now is so much safer. Let's just see. Yeah, it's it. So we're at 50, 60, 70, 80. I'm at, I'm at 78 degrees. <laughs> oh, man. It's amazing how you put more fuel into something that's air-cooled, and it cools it. A top fuel car is not liquid-cooled. It's cooled by the fuel. <clears throat> I've known this for a long time because Mr. Don Garlic explained it to me a long... Don, Big Daddy, <laughs> explained it to me many years ago. A top fuel car is cooled by the fuel that's running through it that's not burnt. Back then, he would burn up to 11 gallons per run. Can you imagine how much fuel they burnt back then? Each quarter mile pass was 10 gallons of fuel. Give me. Wind's blowing. <laughs> we shut the door here. Alrighty. So, retune, a little extra fuel. On the two-step now, when I push the button also, I dial that back. It doesn't pull two degrees. It pulls two degrees with the boost also. So when the hop switch turns on, that's two. When I push the button, that's another 20. I, I Did it shoot fire? I don't even know. It made some fun noises. I let off when it banged out because I can't keep it banging. It's not safe. Newer fuel injected stuff, it's a little safer, but still not really. Not safe here for my setup. Not even a little bit. Is it cool? Uh, yeah. Safe? No. All right, guys. Order a new gasket. I'm going to work for a while when you're on the cylinder head. I kind of doubt you guys want to see all the tedious... It's it's hour. It's gonna be hours of me lapping, <laughs> fitting, getting all the. I'll break you back in for the last couple valves. Show you guys how the top end goes together. It's pretty simple. A couple little locks go in there. No big deal. Uh, once again, I love this bike so much. I I I wish I could hug it. <laughs> I get to ride it, but I just wish I could give it a even a a, a bigger hug because. I love this thing so much. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. Y'all have inspired so much of this, I can't even tell you. But I think you know, I've told you. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Way more to come. We're going to hit the racetrack here soon. Dogs are blowing up out here. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. That rooster crow in 6 a.m. Black rifle coffee. A few good friends. Watching the sun rise in a deer stand, hell yeah, that's my kind of country. Casting a rod out on the lake, ice cold beer, dry tailgates. Watching the sunset fall asleep, hell yeah, that's my kind of country. Out where the green grass grows, it's just one stop sign to a simple life off a dead end old dirt road. Cowboy hats, pickup trucks, four-wheel drives, digging up mud, sipping whiskey from a Dixie cup, hell yeah, that's my kind of country, rodeo buckles, worn-out boots, wide-open fields, small town.